Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start implementing shaders. Now, very first thing I want to do is I want to go into the Render Util class and add a new method. It's going to be public statics, it's going to return a string, and it's going to be called get OpenGL version. Predictably, this is going to return which version of OpenGL we have. And it's just going to return GL get string GL version. And there you go, that will get the current OpenGL version. And at the start of the application, I want to just print that out. So print out render util dot, if I can type it out, render util dot get OpenGL version. And run. And now, whoops, there you go. So as you can see, I personally have OpenGL 4.2.11931, but that's not the important part. The important part is that you have some OpenGL version above about 3.3, because that's sort of what I'm going to be going for right here. If you don't have that, you're probably going to have some trouble following along. So anyways, now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and start implementing the shader class. So, first off, for those of you who don't know, what is a shader? All a shader is, is it's a program, just like the program you've been writing throughout this entire series. The difference is, a shader is a program that's run on the graphics card, and can either be run in three ways. Either it can be run on every vertex, on every fragment, which is like the pixel on some individual mesh, or every individual piece of geometry. So that's all a shader really is. It's a program essentially that's run on a graphics card. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is that we're going to need a new class called the resource loader. And the reason we need this is, well, we're going to be writing this code out in some text file, so we're going to have to be able to load it in. So that's going to be our first task. I'm going to create some public static, if I can type it right, string, and this method is going to be called load shader. It's going to take in some string file name. And, of course, it's going to give me a bunch of errors. But that's okay. So, to actually load this in, I'm going to create a string builder. Just call it, I'll call it shader source. Why not? That's going to be a new string builder. And that's how I'm going to create, er, it's what I'm going to use to load the actual text, eventually. At the end, I'm going to return, render, <laughs> return shader source dot to string. And that should, if I'm not mistaken, give me the, all the text that I store in the string builder. So, that, and I'm going to need a buffered reader. I'll just call it, why not? I'll call it shader reader. It's new buffered reader. Although, actually, wait, I should wait to initialize this, shouldn't I? Yes, I, I should put this in the try catch loop. Not try catch loop, what am I talking about? Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. The try catch construction. So now, I'm going to create try catch. Going to create just any exception. Don't really care which one. I'm just going to print that. And if there's some exception or that goes wrong, I'm just going to end the program with an error. So now to actually load the text, I'm going to take the shader reader. I'm going to set it to a new buffered reader. And if, I believe this takes in a file name, so I'm going to take in. Wait, no, it takes a new file, doesn't it? I'm sorry, I haven't worked with Java I.O. in a while. So, I'm actually not going to load direct, directly from whatever file name they give me. I'm going to have some designated folder, dot slash res slash shaders, where all my shaders are going to be, and I'm just going to add the file name to whatever that is, and got to import some more stuff, excellent. And it's giving me an error. The constructor for buffered reader, comma, file is undefined. All right, one second, I need to look at how I.O. works again. And I actually, it takes in file reader, not file. So, sorry, I was wrong. But fortunately, this should work. Excellent. And at the end of the operation, I'll just do shader reader dot close. All right, cool. So now, I'm going to have a string called line for every single line. I'm going to do a while loop. While, I'm going to set line equal to shader reader dot read line, okay, and why th this, 
that'll assign it, and while it's not equal to null, so it's doing sort of two things in one. And actually this will all take place in one thing. I'll do, I'll do the braces anyways, why not? And in this giant while loop, I'll just do shader source dot append. I can add it on whatever line there is. And then to that, I'm going to have to manually add in the end line character. So I'm going to add back, yeah, backslash in. And there, that should load in the shader file. So that completes that method. Excellent. So now we can actually create the shader class. Excellent. I'll create new class, shader, and first off I'll need some some way to actually store the shader. I'm going to do this with a pointer, just like I did with the mesh data, because, think about it, I'm going to eventually, well I am going to store the program on the graphics card, so yeah. And that's all the variables I want for now. So now, get a constructor, and set program to create program. I'm Pretty sure that's what it is. And I just need to import OpenGL. So import static or .lwjgl .opengl .gl. Actually, I believe it's 2.0. And excellent. So that gives me that. So now the only thing I need to do is test if this somehow failed. So if program equals zero, then that means it's giving me some invalid location. So I'll just system.error.println and I'll, I'll say shader creation failed. Could not find valid memory location in constructor. There. I think that's fairly descriptive of the issue. System.exit1. And there, that's constructor. Cool. So, next up, I just need to add some way of adding code to this shader. So, I'm going to create public void add vertex shader. I'm going to take in some string text. And public void add fragment shader. So, with some string text. And I guess I can go ahead and do the geometry shader, why not? Public void add geometry shader. With some string text. And now I'm going to have some private method, private void, add program. It's going to take in some string text and its type for what shader type it is. And all I'm going to do in these public methods is call this method with text and gl vertex shader. And I'll do fragment shader next. So this one gl changes to gl fragment shader. If I can type it, there you go. And GL Geometry Shader, which I believe will take some extra import. Yes. Which version is it? I believe it's 3.2. GL, GL. 3.2? Is it? Yes! <laughs> Excellent! So, with that, I guess I can just go ahead and implement this method then. So, first off, I'll create an int for shader gl create shader of whatever the type it is. And that's essentially going to give me some pointer to where it can store all the code. So, now if it's zero, then it's some invalid address. And I'll do some similar thing to this. And I'll say shader creation failed. Could not find valid memory location in when adding shader. There. And so now I'll do GL shader source that'll attach to the shader. I want to attach the text that'll attach all the text to the shader. And then I'll just do GL compile. Not Kimple, what whatever I was typing. Shader. And that should take all the code and compile. So now Oh, now that I've done all that, it's generated the code, I want to test to see if it compiled correctly. So, geo, get shader, G, shader, geo, compile status. And, oh dear, it appears something's going on. One second. Okay, it was nothing. So, anyways, back to this. So, I want to get shader, get the compile status. And if that's zero, that means it didn't compile. So, I'm going to system.exit. 
error.println, we can do this interesting method, geo git shader info log of shader, and then some amount of, for all the character text, 1024. And that should print out the error, and then I can just do system.exit1. And finally, now that I've got all this compiled shader code, I want to attach all this code to my main shader program. So, geo attach shader shader program. Or is it the other way around? Okay, good. That appears to be right. Excellent. So, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and add one final method to do the final compilation of all the different shader programs we add to this. So, I'm going to create public void not, not Kimple, compile shader. And what this is going to do, in theory, is take all these different shader pro well, I guess parts of shaders we had, the vertex parts, the fragment parts, and whatever, and, combi and compile them into a working shader program. So most of the code is compiled, so that part's taken care of. All you need to do now is link it, so geo link program, program. That should do all the linking. They don't need to do something very similar to this to actually determine if it worked, so... Except this time it's for program, so... And this time we're looking for GL link status. And after it's been compiled and linked, all I want to do is one final validation check to make sure everything worked out. So do that, and once again, I'm going to do this. I believe it's GL validate status. And that completes the mo all the shader class I really want for right now. A actually, except there's one more thing I want. I want to actually be able to bind the shader, because what's the point of creating this big shader if you can never actually use it? Almost forgot about that. So, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and add the final method, public void bind. And when this method's called, we'll start using whatever this shader program is. So, geo, use program, program. Pretty straightforward. And that completes the shader class I want for right now. But you might be wondering, how do we use this shader class? How do we write shader programs and build them into these big, fancy applications that can do all these awesome things to our geometry? Well, you're going to have to find out next time, because I'm out of time for now. Thank you, and see you next time.